So the iPhone 12 Pro Max has been out since 2020 at the height of the pandemic. Believe it or not, we're almost at a full year with the iPhone 15 Pro Max closing in on 10 months here already for this phone. But let's find out how they compare in a speed test of iOS 18. So let's begin with a boot up test in three two and go and see which one could get there first now keep in mind that both the iphone 15 pro max and the iphone 12 pro max will be getting the official ios 18s but there's a caveat only the iphone 15 pro and pro max will be getting apple intelligence so all phones before it will not be getting it including the 12 pro max which did have six gigs of ram and it makes me think man they were just two gigs away from even the 12 Pro Max potentially getting AI, but not getting the official Apple intelligence. The iPhone 15 Pro Max does turn on a good two seconds or so faster than the 12 Pro Max on iOS 18 beta three. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at Face ID now, and you could see, looks like the iPhone 15 Pro Max and 12 Pro Max can do this task identically. So that hasn't changed whatsoever. Kind of scrolling through, I am pretty impressed with Beta 3's performance here. It's pretty smooth here, even on the older 12 Pro Max and swiping through. This affair is a 60 hertz panel, so it's kind of like the 15 and 15 plus. Performance wise though, the only lag I'm seeing, and this is in all iPhones still, is mostly in these control center toggles when you're adding them. Other than that, the majority of this phone seems to run okay. Of course, there's still bugs here and there. It is a beta, but overall it's been very smooth and I think it's almost ready for public. You'll see over here, the iPhone 15 Pro Max, definitely smoother feeling with its 120 Hertz ProMotion. Um, but once you don't look at this for a while, you don't really notice it too much, um, but definitely jumps out ahead for being much smoother looking when you do a comparison here side by side. All right, just to confirm, we're on the same iOS versions, iOS 18, 22A, 5307F, and over here, iOS 18, 22A, 5307F. Uh, you could tell that's the iPhone 12 Pro Max with that longer notch, and you could tell 15 Pro Max with the dynamic island over there on the right. I do want to show you their clock speeds and chips before we begin the test. You'll see A14 Bionics at 2.99 gigahertz. We're clocked in at almost a gigahertz higher here on the 17 Pro, A17 Pro chip. And you could see 7.48 or rounded out to an eight gigs of RAM versus a six gigs of RAM. I really wish this phone had eight gigs. It would have been amazing. Topo Max still getting Apple intelligence. All right, so here we are at the app test. Everything closed out for both phones. This one is in the light mode. Let me put in the dark mode so they match up a little bit better. Let's go ahead and do calendar. And that was pretty much the same. For some reason, this one is showing the this one's showing the light mode calendar. I'm not sure what that's about. Let's go into the clock here and you can see alarms. We're going to stopwatch, timers. Oh, this one actually might be in the light mode. Oh yeah, this one's in the light mode. That's why it was showing the calendar like that. Yeah, I just had the icons customize the dark mode. Let's go into weather here. Faster on the right. Let's go into calculator and you can see both of these are going to get the history and they'll both still get the math note scientific feature. So you're still at least getting the nice calculator features for the older iPhones. Let's go into app store here on both. You can see a hair quicker on the right, but I've been pretty impressed with the 12 Pro Max performance prior to doing this video. I've been running around the OS. It's surprisingly smooth for an older iPhone, like almost like as smooth as you would expect from a modern phone. So 12 Pro Max, still a great phone. Let's go into Groupon. And this phone is closing in on like the fourth year on the market. So the 12 Pro Max is holding its own. Let's go into things to do. And I remember saying this, like when these phones were coming out, that they were going to last much longer with these more advanced chips than like back in the day with a 5S or a 7 or something like that. Because they had more RAM and more advanced chips. And that's holding to be true. That statement I made a while ago is holding to be true. Same with the iPhone 15 Pro Max. These newer phones, they can last. And you know, the data is showing that a lot of customers are tending to keep their phones. All right, so let's go into Instagram here and you could see about the same. Let's go over here, take a look at my iPad Pro post I did. And let's go over here to this one. 
you can see even in the gram it's look at the performance it's nearly exactly the same i'm not seeing any real major discrepancies here in apps you know a lot of people say um, in my comments well what's the point of doing the app test the point is i want to see how the performance of my day-to-day -day usage will be i don't know about you but I tend to use my apps. It's what I buy a phone for, to use the applications. People say, well, you need to really, really push these a lot harder. Look, I'm not editing video full, full blast on my iPhone. Um, I'm doing that on a Mac. Let's go into Dead Trigger 2. What I'm doing is playing games, like you see here, some casual games here and there. I'm running through my apps constantly, day to day. I'm running through the main software. I'm popping open the camera. I'm basically general performance mostly, and you'll see, but even in the general performance, you'll see that the iPhone 12 Pro Max is really doing well. Let's go into Free Fire. And I don't know a lot of people who are actually using their phone for um, computer tasks. There are a niche crowd. There are some. But how many of you are actually using it for a computer task? I would, be, I would bet that a, a lot of you are using your laptop or your iPad for more you know, serious computing stuff. Let's go into Subway Surfers, probably not even the iPad, probably your laptop, if we're being real. Let's go over here, and you see, was that faster? Hold on, was that a fluke? Let's go ahead and close these out. No, I don't wanna, I don't wanna say it was, I just wanna check. Okay, yeah, that might have been me mistapping while I was talking. I'll do it one more time for good measure, but it looked like on the first run, we'll do it again. The 12 Pro Max was ahead. Nah, I messed it up. It was the iPhone 15 Pro Max there. Let's go into Temper Run 2. And we'll see what happens. You see on the iOS 18, the new game mode does pop up. Blazing on through with the iPhone 15 Pro Max. So, as I expected, the game is where it's going to launch ahead on the 15 Pro Max. I think generally, though, any phone with a ProMotion definitely makes the overall experience feel faster and smoother. However, Apple's animations do need to speed up a little bit because a lot of Android phones are a lot quicker looking than their animations these days. But maybe they don't want that. Maybe they want to keep it that slower, visually beautiful. But I think there's a way they could speed it up while still keeping that. Uh, you see, even PUBG didn't take that long on the 12 Pro Max. So, I mean, we're talking about the difference in seconds here. Even on iOS 18 Beta 3, even though this phone came out in 2020. Let's go into the Jetpack Joyride. At this point, I'd probably just wait for the 16 Pro Max if you have a 12 Pro Max. We have to relaunch these because I wasn't ready on this one. At this point, I would simply just wait until we have the 16 Pro Max from the 12 Pro Max because of this fact right here. Hold on, let me close these out. Because of this fact right here. If you have the iPhone 12 Pro Max and you upgrade to the 15 Pro Max, yeah, you're getting a ton of upgrades, but same size screen. You're probably gonna get a bigger screen here if you go to, and this was faster on the 15 Pro Max after all, you're probably going to get a bigger screen and even more great upgrades with the upcoming 16 Pro Max plus Apple Intelligence now supported. So I think it's a great upgrade from the 12 Pro Max to the 16 Pro Max. I'll talk about that in an upcoming video. Let's go into speed test. So be subscribed for that. If you have a 12 Pro Max, I will be discussing that again going forward. Geekbench 6, about the same. 3D Mark. Out to the iPhone 15 Pro Max and iMovie a little quicker on the right. You've seen throughout this entire test, Beta 3 doing very well, but the 15 Pro Max not way ahead. Um, in general, everyday tasks, Apple looks like they're doing a good job on these older iPhones. So even though they're not giving you intelligence, they are giving you really good performing software on iOS 18. So you're still going to get that traditional smooth Apple feel, even though you have an older iPhone coming up for the official 18. So let's run through RAM management. I expect this to do pretty good. It has six gigs of RAM. This is not your four gig of RAM iPhone. So I don't expect many reloads, if any. This actually has better RAM management than the iPhone 13 and the 14. Well, the 14 has six gigs, so it should be about the same as the 14, but the 13 for sure has better than that. And it's the app store just reloading the page where it shows the apps. This is just weather data, not a big deal. Look at that. Everything basically held open for the 12 Pro Max. That six gigs of RAM was a great choice on this phone. All right, bring it over here to 15 Pro Max. You can see 
what generally I'm seeing is is visually perception the visual perception that you get is just because of the promotion you visually perceive this to be much smoother looking um and that's what the refresh rate does it it makes you feel like it's so much snappier but really it's doing about the same performance here it just looks better because it has that 120 hertz so yeah of course the 15 pro max looked better here but the technically speaking the 12 pro max basically held its own against this phone in the ram management didn't win it out this is still looking better but still did pretty good for being its age all right so let's go ahead and do a browser test so we're at apple.com let's hit go about the same we're gonna buy an ipad pro maybe maybe not let me know do you guys like that new ipad pro you're not a fan let me know down below. Let's go into another website. How about yahoo.com? All right, so let's go to yahoo.com, three, two, go. And you could see a little faster on the right. Nothing too insane. Let's go over here. And let's get up out of here. Let's go ahead and just click something else. These are just random articles. You can see once in, no major issues. Browsing, browsing is fine. You know, it's really not a problem on either. Um, you do have 5G on both too, so 5G performance may be a little bit better with the reception strength on the 15 Pro Max. As modems do get better connectivity, a little snappier on the 15 Pro Max, but it's not going to be that noticeable in your day-to-day -day usage. It really isn't. And our final test is done here on Wildlife Extreme for the iPhone 15 Pro Max. You can see a 3625 average frame rates of 217 now, this is way better than the iPhone 12 Pro Max at 2263 and 13.6 FPS. So if you play graphically intensive games on your smartphone, um, it's nearly a 40% increase for the iPhone 15 Pro Max. So you would have to be playing games on here to really make up the difference and see it on these two phones. Now, if we go here to the video rendering section here, you'll see that I have the same video and you can see scrubbing through a timeline is pretty similar. But let's go ahead and see which one can actually save this project first. So we'll say, oh, here. And I'll be back when they're done. Very weird turn of events. The 12 Pro Max actually exported this video faster. So I'm not exactly sure what that was about. Uh, maybe the iMovie is better optimized for an older uh, iPhone. I'm not sure, but that was very weird. But you could see that you could still export videos very quick, even on an older iPhone versus a newer one. But yeah, that's that's basically, that was a weird result. All right, guys. So let's go ahead and hit camera on both of them. See which one does this faster, if any. And the iPhone 15 Pro Max, a little faster to launch its camera. And we'll do it again. Yep, 15 Pro Max. Taking the photo, shutter speed about the same. No major disparities there. So at the end of the day, the iPhone 15 Pro Max is uh, about 40% faster in gaming. Uh, it seems about like 15% in single core. Overall, though, I feel like the 12 Pro Max doesn't really slow me down whatsoever in 2024. So if you held on to this phone, I'd say keep holding on to the 16 Pro Max at least. And if that doesn't even do it for you... I think the 15 Pro Max is probably one you would skip if you had this and you still haven't upgraded, but the 17s next year after the 16s, if you hold on your 12 Pro Max that long, if you do that, that's going to be even bigger upgrade than the current 16 Pro Max that are coming. So this phone impressed me here in this video. This one, obviously impressive. It's the latest and greatest. What else is there to say? But the older iPhone did pretty well in this test. What do you guys think? Comment down below. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Nick here. I'll catch you on the next one. And peace.